Good morning guys, welcome to another episode. I'm here in Kuta Lombok, I'm about to go surfing, I've got a bit of a motorbike ride and then I'm going to meet a guy who's going to take me out on the boat, film, hopefully the waves are going to be really fun this morning and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about surfing in this place. So for now I'm going to get on the bike and I'll see you at the beach. So just to break down some of the different waves, now I won't break down all of them, there's so many different waves. Where I surfed just then, that was Gerapuk. So Gerapuk is kind of like this big bay with loads of different waves in it. Now where I surfed was called Outside Gerapuk, which kind of picks up the most swell in that sort of bay area, kind of breaks out of the back and then just reforms as it moves into the inside. Pretty weird wave, it seems to kind of have just different sections of the reef where it like doubles up and walls up but for the most part it's just like a fun kind of fat like right hand point break pretty sick backdrop as you saw then of these like big limestone cliffs which is is pretty cool then on the inside of it you've got the aptly named insides which is another version of that wave it's kind of like a more refined version so it's cleaner because it's way further into the bay i've never actually surfed it but it seems to be like a really good like beginner intermediate sort of spot both times i've been there i've rocked up and there's been like 40 or 50 beginners out there and it wasn't really breaking it was really fat and high tide but i think at mid tide it gets a, a lot steeper and it's a bit more rippable for advanced surfers I've seen videos of it where it's really wally and really fun so i think when the swell is bigger and the tide is right that's a good place to to surf for sure so another really fun wave is ekas so just across the next bay from gerapuk you've got ekas now ekas like gerapuk has an inside and outside the inside section is kind of like an a-frame peak much like the inside of gerapuk and then the outside is more of like a predominant left that's a bit more powerful and picks up a bit more swell um, so yeah, Ekas is definitely a good wave. Then we've got Sagar Beach. Now Sagar is a really exposed break, really consistent, picks up basically any swell that's running at this time of year. So in dry season, a lot of these spots that I'm mentioning now, because of the trade winds, they are on shore most of the time. After 10, 11 a.m. when those trade winds whip up, it's basically on shore for the rest of the day. So anything that's facing south, I guess, directly into the swell, 
is gonna have that same effect. Moving westward, you've got Are Guling. I don't know how you pronounce that, but again, it's like it's like a big bay with a left on one side and a right on the other. I think the right is the most surfed wave. I've driven past it a few times and it, there hasn't been anybody out and it's not really looked that good, so I don't know which conditions it, it works on specifically. Again, because of those trade winds, I think it's more of a wet season wave than dry season, so I'm here in mid-August, which is like peak dry season. So I guess like the opportunity to go and try and score it is a bit more limited. But in dry season, there's a really fun wave called Maui, which actually faces away from the trade wind. So you can get it offshore all day, which is pretty cool. It breaks off a beach, but it's actually reef. It's like this A-frame reef. There's like a short punchy right, and then like a, a long, like a pretty long fun left. At this time of year, that's offshore most of the day. So that's a really good spot to check out it's kind of like a good go-to spot so yeah there's so many different waves and these are all kind of just scattered in and around the kuta lombok area something to bear in mind though is that you will need to drive and get a boat to a lot of these spots so it does make it a bit of a mission i'm a pretty busy person so i'm i'm working most of the time and i like to be working and then you know run out for a quick surf just do like a quick power hour but it's really hard to do that here because basically anytime you want to go surfing you've got like a 30 40 minute drive and and then you've got like another 20 minute boat ride you've got to organize the boat and it just becomes like this whole ordeal of <laughs> to go surfing and I'm, I'm not really a fan of that but yeah if you're just coming here to surf then I guess that's not a problem I've only done the boats like a few times but to get out to but all the Gerapuk waves costs on average around 200,000 so around 15 US dollars which is pretty fair you know it's not too bad but if you're doing that every single day it does add up so that's something to bear in mind. In town, there's so many nice accommodations. You've got like budget. If you're on a tight budget, check out Wayward's Hostel, Mellow Hostel, Botcher Hostel, and Mad Monkey. So these are all hostels where you can get rooms for $10 or less per night, which is pretty sick. You can find all of them on booking.com or Hostel World. So I'll leave the links to some of these down in the description. If you prefer somewhere really nice and have your own room, which is kind of what I want, right now I'm staying at a beautiful place called Aldi's Bungalow like such a nice like little garden area and then this pool area as well which is in the shape of a guitar weirdly so yeah as you can see it's a super nice place to stay they've got these bungalows which are these ones at the back here so if you're in a group or with the family they're a great one to stay they've got different rooms within it and then they've got like the smaller bungalows which are over there which if you're a couple then that's a great option and then where i'm staying is like kind of the budget section of the the property what the hell is this doing off so yeah this is my room it's obviously pretty basic but it does the job 20 dollars per night ensuite bathroom just around there too much room to keep boards but yeah, definitely not complaining. If you prefer to book your surf trip all in one booking, check out Book Surf Camps. You can book packages in Kuta Lombok that include your airport transfers, your accommodation, your surf coaching, your photos. A lot of the best camps also throw in like yoga and fitness sessions and that kind of thing. Offer heaps of different camps in Kuta Lombok for all different abilities. So I'll leave the links to some of the best ones down in the description. To get to Kuta Lombok, especially from Bali, you've got a few different options. There's a few different ferry companies that operate routes from Padang Bai to Bangsal and a few other ports on Lombok. I chose a company called Gangari. It cost around 30 US dollars. It was okay, I mean, to be honest, the getting the ferry is just a little bit of a faff. We stopped at Gili Trawangan and Gili Air. Conditions were pretty smooth as well, so I'm sure it takes a lot longer sometimes. To be honest, if I did it again, I would probably just fly. You can find flights from Bali to Lombok for hundred dollars or less the only reason i didn't this time is because i had a pretty heavy board bag and and i had four boards in it so i, I didn't want to get stung for like individual boards you've also got to factor in the taxi transfers on either side so you know if you come in from changu or uluwatu and then you've got to get to padang Bai, you know you'll pay three hundred thousand rupiah so let's say that's 20 us dollars you pay thirty dollars for your ferry ticket 
and then you're going to pay another 300,000 rupee to get from Bangsal to Kuta Lombok. So by the time you've done that, you've kind of spent 100 bucks anyway. You might be able to find taxi transfers cheaper, but yeah, just once you've factored in all the costs, it probably is a lot better to fly. So once you're here in Kuta Lombok, you're going to have to get around. All the surf breaks are pretty spread out, so you're going to have to drive to get to them and you're going to have to drive to get the boat to get to the spots or, you know, just drive to the breaks. So a moped is essential. I'd recommend trying to organize this through your accommodation. Just flick them a message and say, look, I need a motorbike with surfboard racks and they'll usually be able to sort you out. If they can't, there's a few different places on the main street in Kuta where you can easily rent a moped. I mean, you basically can't walk down the street without, you know, getting hassled to, to rent a motorbike. So the first point I wanna make is the crowd. To be honest, I was pretty shocked at how crowded it was, especially like in on those Gerapuk waves. Like the first morning we rocked up, there was like, maybe 50 beginners on the inside section and then around another 30 on the outside section. All the days I've surfed at Maui, there's been like 20 odd people out there. But that said, there's, probably, there's so many different waves that you can get them at different times where there's not that many people. I'm, for example, this morning when I paddled out, I was the only one out for 20, 30 minutes and then a few other people joined me. The next point I wanna make is safety. So in Kuta town itself, it's really safe. You know, you can walk around at night. It's a really alive like little place. There's so many like little bars and cool restaurants and stuff. Safety is okay, it's fine in Kuta. A few different people have told me that it's not safe to drive outside of Kuta at nighttime. Over the years, I've heard a lot of stories about Lombok where like people will try and throw like sticks in your motorbike spokes and knock you off and then rob you. So I definitely advise not driving out, you know, outside of Kuta by yourself, because it's just, it's not really worth the risk. I mean, it probably will be fine most of the time, but it's always fine until it's not, right? So who is Kuta Lombok the best for in terms of surfability? If you're a beginner, it's a wicked spot. It's all reef breaks, but a lot of the reef breaks are kind of deep and pretty mellow. And there's like inside sections of waves that, you know, really easy places to learn. If you're an intermediate, it's probably the best place in the world. I mean, you've got so many different waves. You've got left, right, you've got that reef break predictability. It would be a really good place to get more familiar with reef breaks and points and like these surfing lineups without like the intimidating nature of like more powerful places. For the most part, I found a lot of the waves to be pretty mellow here and I like pretty mellow waves in general, but even for me, I found it that most of the time it's pretty fat and pretty weak. You're an advanced surfer, like I wouldn't expect to come here and get like pumping, pumping waves like you might want to come to Indo for. So what's Kuta Lombok main town like? Now, to be honest, it's a pretty small town. It's like just got this one like main intersection that crosses over. There's some really cool cafes and restaurants on that main sort of strip. My favorites include Munchies, Milk Espresso, Nohi, which is a bit further out. But yeah, if you're looking somewhere to get good coffee or get some work done, you're kind of spoiled for choice. And in town as well, there's so many cool places to eat. My favorite joint is called KRNK. It's like a really good burger joint. If you've got four or five dollars per meal in you, then you can eat really, really good food. You can do it a lot cheaper than this if you go to the roadside like places in town you've got like all the conveniences you've got places to exchange currency you've got little like pharmacy medical places places to get massages haircuts loads of different like surf schools and like surf photo services as well so I'll leave some links down to some of that stuff in the description it's got everything and it's kind of seems to be like this growing place that I imagine is only gonna get a lot busier especially after I post this video. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown to Kuta Lombok. So my trip's been hindered a little bit. I had the flu for basically the first week I was here and then had this weird neck injury. So to be honest, I haven't been able to enjoy it to the fullest. But if you're an intermediate surfer, I just think it's a sick place to come and check out. You've just got waves that allow for that progression but without being too intimidating. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to make a video on this place for a long time. So I really hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope it's given you all the information you need to, to come and visit this place. Any questions, please let me know down in the comments. As always, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.